This is Amtrak's high-speed Acela train. It runs 10 times a day between Boston and Washington, D.C., hitting top speeds of 150 miles per hour. The heavily trafficked corridor, Amtrak's most successful, is what many want this country's rail system to be. Then there's the Lincoln service, a 300-mile stretch between Chicago and St. Louis, running at an average of 60 miles per hour. It's the rail system that exists just about everywhere else in the country. On paper, the Lincoln has a lot going for it. Door to door, the trip is scheduled to take about the same amount of time as flying. And on the train, you can walk around, make friends with strangers, and generally have a good time without being jumped by air marshals. Nobody ever buys shit on this train. They buy that block. You see how much block I got on the thing? That's it? Oh, well, you should give me that. There are a few rules, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, please be reminded when walking through the cars, you must have shoes on. But the train ride is much better in theory than in fact. For one thing, Years of dwindling budgets from Congress have led to cutbacks in all parts of the system. From the ragged chairs and coach, to the maroon business class seats that look like they were designed in the height of the 80s, to the fleet of rundown ticket offices like this one in St. Louis known as Amshack, and the leaky passages between the cars, Amtrak is worse off all around. Unfortunately, the future of Amtrak rests on the dozen corridors across the country that look much more like the Lincoln service than the Acela Express. To fill the budget gaps, states like Illinois and California have stepped in to subsidize additional routes, like the Lincoln service. The states are saying, look, it's less expensive for us and more land use efficient for us to hire Amtrak to run more trains on most of the existing infrastructure than it is to pay for more and more lanes of highway. And the investment has paid off. Ridership is up 55%. Meanwhile, Amtrak has found creative ways to subsidize other parts of the network. On long-distance lines, additional cars are attached to the trains filled with mail for the Postal Service. And on shorter lines, like the Lincoln, we pick up passengers newly liberated from the Springfield prison. But to longtime fans of train travel, and new converts alike, the biggest drawback to regional train travel is the delays. Once again, we got a little bit of a signal problem here. Now. Everyone has their own ideas about what causes the delays. It could be the giant, slow-moving freight carriers holding up the lines. I guess there's a freight liner that was in front of us and we got slowed up by the freight liner, and so. It could be the weather. So we're about 45 minutes north of Springfield. We haven't even hit the halfway point in our trip, and we're sitting still because of thunderstorms and signal problems. Or it could be a combination of more human forces. There he is. Like, say, the occasional passenger who forgets his stop and holds up the whole train searching for his luggage in the wrong car. You back there. All the way back. Here, let you out. Let him through, you all. Here he come! Did he find it? He's coming now! Sitting there, staring out the window, you can see the biggest source of delays. It's the tracks. Amtrak rents most of its rail from cargo carriers who have no need for the modern tracks used to propel high-speed trains. Amtrak uses over 21,000 miles of track, but it owns less than 700 of those miles. And most of that's on the Northeast Corridor. By controlling the track and laying new high-speed lines, the Acela trains that run between Boston and Washington can achieve higher speeds and reduce delays. But for the rest of the country, the rented cargo tracks are a confusing and unreliable network of slower rail lines. For example, the tracks between St. Louis and Chicago are owned alternately by Union Pacific, Burlington Northern, and Canadian National. Buying additional land and laying new track would be a very expensive investment. But without that investment, the potentially lucrative, underdeveloped corridors around the country will continue relying on inconsistent state support. For the Wall Street Journal Digital Network, I'm Matt Rivera.